everybody. Welcome back to Recordology. Today we're going to tackle the Sesame Street player that we reviewed recently. If you want to see that full review video, I did about five or six days ago, so go check that out. But while doing that review, we realized that we had a little bit of a speed issue. It was playing slow. So I'm going to try and fix that today. I don't know for sure if I can fix that, but I'm going to try. So I have no idea whether or not this is going to work. And yeah, I just played slow is what it comes down to. I'm sure this is a rim drive unit. So if there's not speed adjustments on the motor, there's nothing on the back. That would have been the easiest trim pots on the back that connected to the motor. Then possibly there is some trim pots inside or perhaps the idler wheel is losing some of its rubber uh, tackiness and needs to be regenerated with some boiling water. I don't know. So we'll see where this goes. But uh, placing a strobe disc, by the way, I know there's apps to check the speed of a turntable, but you can't go wrong with a strobe disc. It's uh, the most accurate. And as you can see there, we're looking at this ring right here. See how it's moving to the left? Well, that means that it's slow. So we got to do something about it. By the way, if you want one of these... Uh, Hudson Hi-Fi strobe discs. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below. They're super handy. And then on the reverse side, obviously not for a turntable like this, but for a higher end turntable, it also gives you the ability to set um, your cartridge alignment to make sure it's perfect, as well as the azimuth. So, all right, guys, let's go ahead and open it up and see what we can find out. One of the best advancements, in my opinion, in this 1983-1984 model was the removal of the annoying safety screws that were used in the older Fisher Price units from 1978-79 in favor of plain old Phillips because those other ones which are essentially the screw head is essentially like a Phillips screwdriver tip they are a pain I mean you can buy the appropriate tools but I didn't have it, so it made it very difficult. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and unscrew this, and we'll see what we can see. Even with the absence of those annoying safety screws, it was kind of tricky. These screws were in there very, very tight. I did take the lid off, but I haven't opened it yet. Save that moment for you and I. So let's see what we got here. So we've got a couple screws hanging up still a little bit. Hold on. Come on. So close yet so far. There we go. Okay, here we go. Big reveal time. And I just dumped all the screws all over the ground. Okay, so this is even more basic than I thought. Apparently, it is not an idler drive unit. It's possibly a rim drive unit. Very, very simplistic battery compartment. The bottom side of the platter, which apparently we're going to need to get in there to look under there. That's about it. Simple circuit board. Let's look at this speaker here. Baku. Baku. 8 ohm, 0.5 watt. Close up look at some of the components here. Very, very, very simple. Circuit board. It's in there pretty tight. Oh, well, this is interesting. This roller is only a half circle, whereas the volume is an actual full wheel. Yeah, interesting. Doesn't really help me with the speed problem. Let's look at the motor here. Super basic motor. I mean, I don't really see any obvious adjustments that could be made in terms of speed. Looking at the battery compartment here, it's kind of interesting how the negative terminals literally just are this plate. It's not wired to or connected to anything. Only the positive, which is kind of interesting. You can see these little relays and trap deals here for when the tone arm is lifted and moved into certain positions, opens and closes circuits. There's the bottom side of the tone arm assembly and the wires coming out of that up to the board. But looking at this motor, I just don't see much. I mean, there's a little hole right there 
that could be our trim pot. So let me get out my little jeweler screwdriver. Sometimes you have to stab through the insulation to get to the actual trim pot. See what I can find out. I am curious what this looks like underneath here or inside there, so we'll look there as well. Before we deal with the motor, I'm gonna try and get inside of this guy right here. And there's no easy way to do it. So I thought maybe a plastic card would be good so we don't have to chance damaging anything. I mean, not that this won't, but I thought something plastic would be better than jamming metal in there to try and pop it op open. Yeah, it's just not, not doing anything. Yeah. Okay, we're going to have to forego that. Unfortunately, it might just... I don't want a chance damaging it, and I honestly feel there's nothing for us to adjust in there. It's just going to be a little rubber wheel directly in contact with that motor. So, we're going to take a look at the motor itself. So we've got this little jeweler screwdriver here from an eyeglass kit. So I guess it's an eyeglass screwdriver, not a jeweler's screwdriver, but it just sounds cooler that way. So, All right, I am going to attempt to affect change on this motor. Okay, something rigid there. Hmm. Well, that might just be metal. Honestly, that may not be an adjustment. I thought that was a pad that we could stab through and find the screw. Trim pot. Yeah, there's nothing there. Dang it. Since the motor didn't look that promising in terms of you know, something to fix or adjust. Look at the circuit board here. This pink and gray wires, these pink and gray wires coming from the motor. See if there's anything on the other side there. I do notice this missing screw there, so perhaps we aren't, oh, I was gonna say we weren't the first ones under the hood here, but now that I think about it, that aligns with one of the screws in the lid, so that was us. Anyway, just one more screw here, and we should be able to pop the circuit board off. See what we can see. Look at that. That's interesting. So this little rocker knob deal just switches this. <laughs> That's cool. Little chips in there. Let's see, we got OKI and TBA. Interesting. There is what we're looking for, my friends. Those are the trim pots. So the trick now is making those adjustments under the hood while monitoring the effect of our adjustments above the hood. <laughs> so let me see, let me get set up for a different shot here and we'll see what we can do. Okay, somewhat precarious here. I have the uh, platter flipped over loosely on the lid and the circuit board is safely outside of it as possible because we have to be able to see the platter, the strobe disc while we're making those adjustments. So it also helps if I plug it in. And again, what we're looking for is we're going to start with the 33 speed. So we're looking for this band right here to be steady. So I am going to choose this one. I'm not 100% sure which. Looking through the lens, I am going to make an adjustment and hopefully this is the right one. Right there is the 33 adjustment. Looks like I got to tweak it just a tad bit more, but I'm getting close, getting close. Okay, I think we've got it as close as we can get it, so time to put it back together and plug that very gently, at least as much as possible. Flip this guy over again. The lid functions as a very good surface because it's fitted to that, obviously. Now we need to very carefully place this back here. Careful not to touch the caps because, where did that knob go? because caps can still harm you even after 
it's unplugged because they hold voltage. It's kind of like a short-term battery. Anyhow, um, let's go ahead and put this wheel back in here. Let's see here. Oh, it has to go on this first. And go to college for nothing. Okay, so I'm going to screw this guy back on. Hopefully we didn't treat the cables too roughly in the process of flopping everything around. I gotta make sure that we route the wires in the appropriate way. Some of these little posts here sometimes are designed to help route the wires and keep them from becoming pinched. So, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put the lid back on, screw that down tight, and we'll test out Sesame Street. We'll listen to Ernie again. This time, hopefully, he won't sound demonic. Okay, stand by. Okay, moment of truth, you guys. As we lift the little bird tone arm on the big bird record player, let's see how Ernie sounds. We have successfully repaired the Sesame Street phonograph. Repaired. It's not a repair. Made an adjustment to the speed. But hey, I look for small victories, and this was a victory, guys. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Share it out. Give me a comment down below. Let me know what I missed or did wrong or maybe what I did right. That would be a nice thing. But anyway, that's going to do it for now. Thank you so much, guys. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.